Okay. So, the other rule of radicals that we went over um, last class period was the quotient rule of radicals. And if you guys remember, the quotient rule of radicals basically stated that if you had, um, how did I write it the same one? Oh yeah, so the product. So if you have the nth root of x over y, you can break that up into the nth root of x over the nth root of y. So if you have the root of a fraction, you can basically just do the root of the numerator divided by the root of the denominator. OK? That works also the same the other way. If I have the nth root of x divided by the nth root of y, what that means is I can put them over the same root. So I just rewrote the same thing again. As long as you guys understand, they go back and forth, like they go either way. Sometimes for students, I have noticed that students have problems with that. So I just rewrote it anyways, going from left to right. But does this kind of make sense? Is everybody OK with this? Yes? No? Good. OK. Now, one thing I noticed is in this problem, the steps are the same. Simplify, apply operation, simplify. What I notice in here, does two, do you guys think 2 divides into 54? Yeah, they're both even, right? Would x squared divide into x to the fifth? Yes. And would y divide into y cubed? Yes. So in this problem, I'm going to simplify them. And by simplifying, what I'm going to do is I am going to put them under the same radical symbol. So therefore, by putting them under the same radical, now I can basically simplify them. So Anthony, what I would write down here is 54 divided by 2. That's now going to leave me with 27. Um, if you guys remember, x to the fifth divided by x squared equals x to the 5 minus 2, which is 3. three. And I had y cubed divided by y equals y to the third minus 1, which is? OK, perfect. Now we applied our operation. We divided, right? Can you divide Well, yeah, you can't divide x into a number, right? You can only divide x into x. Yeah, you, only, you can only divide numbers into numbers, x's into x's, y's into y's. Right? Yes, yeah, you can break it up. Yes, absolutely. Because that, that was the product row of radicals. Exactly. All right. Shh. So again, now I want to see, can I break this up into square terms? And yes, of course you can. Again, I'll do this again slow for you guys, because we're going to start picking this up. But can I break? 27 is not a square number, but I can break that up into 9 times 3. I can break up x cubed as x squared times x, and then I already have y squared. Right? Break that up into 3 squared times 3 times x squared times x times y squared. Now we just apply our identity element. Any element where we have the nth root of a to the n equals a. So I have the square root. Any element that I have, since we're talking about the square root, right, because this is a 2, because nothing's written there, so it's a 2. So now I'm basically looking at every element that's to the second power I can pull out of the radical. So I have 3 to the second power, x squared to the second power, and y and y to the second power. So it's 3xy <coughs> times the square root of what's left over, 3x. OK? Yes. No. 